senses ready and your heart open because this episode we're going to take a closer look on the richness of Labuan Bajo's culture that shaped the people. See the beauty only on Sea Indonesia. From West Mangarai, our journey takes us to the south central part of the Regency. Start your engines, we're going on a road trip. From the blue scenery of the sea, we are going up to the hills with greenery all around us. First place we're heading to is a cultural village where we're checking out a traditional house called Barunia. It takes two to three hours to reach Todo from Ruteng, which is located about 18 kilometers southwest of the idyllic town. Nestle at the valley in the West Satamisop district. No, 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 too foggy, too foggy. <laughs> Nestled at the valley in the West Southern Misop district lays a Todo customary village, said to be the birthplace of Barunyang traditional houses. In the past, Todo was the seat of the Mangarayan kingdom and home to a royal clan. The clan of Todo had been the dominant power in the southern Mangarai long before the Dutch administration started to get involved in local politics. Upon my arrival, they obligated every visitor to wear their traditional sarong, a hand-woven fabric with Songke Todo motifs. I had the privilege of being escorted by the king of Todo himself, Helmon Jehanus, who is an 11th generation Todo clan member. He claimed that his ancestors came from Minangkabau in Sumatra hundreds of years ago. He based his argument on a set of British canons. Kalau Maryam ini, jadi menurut sejarah turun temurun, ini barang bawaan dari Minang. Kalau kita telusuri betul, jadi dia punya letak. Jadi Sumatra ini dia berdekatan dengan Malaysia. Sementara Malaysia salah satu negara jajahan Inggris. Right at the center, there's a stack of stone called Watu Todo, which guards the village and symbolizes its power. Jadi kalau kita perhatikan, dia berbentuk kerucut, dan itu gambaran dari satu bayangan dari rumah datang di tengah itu. Ah, right. We're entering the conical-shaped house with massive palm fiber roof that almost reaches the ground. The entrance was intentionally built very low, so everyone needs to bow when coming into the main house, regardless of who they are. It was purposely designed as a sign of respect. Since I'm an outsider, they summon an ancestral spirit to bless my visit. A shaman is the only one who could communicate with the spirit world. The spirit has given his blessing, so I asked the shaman, Agustinus Bandung, on the philosophy behind the uniquely shaped roof. Kalau rumain kesirata ke bawah dari kebun yang baginya serang lapa-lapa. Kalau istilah mengerai tembong oleh lingkup ya. Yang baginya serang lapa-lapa. Ada hubungannya dengan yang di dalam. Honestly, I don't know what he's talking about. I guess I'll have to go to Chanchar village myself and see it with my own eyes. Hmm. But let's talk about the house first. The inside of the main house is spacious and with a furniture. Meanwhile, the high ceiling can also be practical during the harvest season. In the past, they used a long piece of bamboo as a rack to place their crops, seeds and emergency stockpile of produce. On the back side of the house, there's a big fireplace with a bamboo rack on top where they keep livestock. The house is also adorned with wood carving in feather-like tribal motifs, 
symbolizing solidarity and peace. There used to be nine traditional houses here, but some of them, they wither within time. So there's only six uh, traditional houses left over here. And according from the local, he said that one house like this, it can be inhabited by, you know, more than one family. Oh, what do we have here? Underneath the house, a lady is busy making a woven textile. Colorful threads are expertly woven to make a traditional fabric called Lipa Songke. This is the motif of uh, traditional Todo people. This is called Rampa Take. It resembles the palm of a gecko. Maybe it's a symbol for luck. No. She do this to pass time and make extra income while waiting for the harvest season. Her handwoven fabrics are mostly exclusively sold here in Todo. Another village that still keeps Mangarayan tradition is called Melo in West Mangarai. Located only 25 kilometers from Labuan Bajo, Melo is an excellent choice for travelers in search of a distinct cultural experience. So I've seen the uh, architecture philosophy, but now in this Melo village, I want to immerse myself in this traditional ceremony that involves dance and Hmm, maybe something more. Come on. Festivities began immediately right at the front gate. Okay, as usual, they're gonna give you the scarf, traditional weave. Can you hear? I can already hear the music. This is gonna be good. like welcoming ceremony. To open the ceremony, the elder of the tribe handed me a pinang siri, a betel knot combined with tobacco and calcium hydroxide, aka slackline. And I need to chew them. <laughs> <laughs> they prepared a bamboo for me to spit it out on. It was done as a symbol of acceptance by the elders of Melo. My lau Jakarta me. Kami senang nai ita rangaditean. Next, the elders asked their ancestor for permission to perform a dance. Then we exchange a few words and some gifts. At the end of the ceremony, the elder handed me a cup made of coconut shell filled with sopi, a local type of palm wine. This is called tua, so this is of course alcoholic beverage, so cheers to that. Okay. It's quite strong. But it does wash off the bitterness of the betel nut. <laughs> the dancers, dressed in warrior costumes, are the Chachi dancers. See those men in white shirts? They are the supporters. Much like a sport match, the supporters are cheering for them to win. They are singing Nengo or Dare while dancing to the beat of gongs and drums. Before we begin, the elder explains the Chachi dance to us. Ini namanya Toda, terbuat dari kulit kerbau, bentuknya bulat. Kalau ini namanya Koret, terbuat dari ujung bambu, rotan kecil, dan tali lekeng. 
Tora dan Koret ini ada dua makna. Pertama, ini melambangkan bumi, ini melambangkan langit. Yang kedua, ini melambangkan mama dan ini melambangkan mama. Karena kehidupan manusia itu selalu membuat bantuan dari bapak dan mama. Ibu ini namanya bado untuk memukul. Jadi bado ini melambangkan kehidupan manusia. Contoh seorang mancati, dia seorang jago, ada waktunya dia kena. Demikian kehidupan manusia, apakah dia itu pejabat, orang kaya, masyarakat kecil, atau orang miskin, masing-masing punya tantangan hidup. Because Chachi is traditionally performed by men, therefore I cannot start the whole dance. But my cameraman will do the honor to start this. So... Jealous, but that's okay, I guess. <laughs> and look at their festive costumes. They wear some kind of helmet made of hard calf skin to protect their face from their opponent's attack. They also wear white trousers and Mangarai's iconic songket sarong, while bells are tied around the dancers' back to follow their movements closely. The dancers would first do a little dance to warm up. Afterwards, they challenge each other while singing traditional songs, then the game begins. There are some rules in this bout. A player can only hit the upper parts of his opponent's body, as in the arms, back or chest. The dancer must try to deflect the opponent's attack. The name of the dance itself, Chachi, comes from the word cha, meaning one, and chi, meaning test. It originated from Mangarai tradition, where men will fight each other one-on-one -on -one to test their courage and skill in combat. Although this dance features a glimpse of violence, it has a positive message behind it, like sportsmanship and expression of happiness. Rain starts pouring down amid the fight, so they wrap it up and ask me to close the dance ceremony. Watching the rain at the spectator's hut, one player was hit by a whip that left a mark on his arm. Oh, see that? God. <coughs> so, yeah, I mean, I saw it and I was like, oh God, that's gotta hurt. Because, yeah, he did. He got that, he got a whiplash from the, you know, from the whip. So, yeah, he got that. Ugh. But there are no hard feelings among them. <laughs> Rain will not stop us from dancing, so we prepare to dance inside the elder's house. The dance is called Ndududake. It is usually performed by women during cultural ceremonies. The dance is an expression of a welcoming hug. So the dance basically consists of a lot of uh, small movement on your feet, on your hands and then also on your hips. But I mean, if you listen to the music, the gundang is amazing. It's like you're automatically just want to keep dancing. Rice fields have recently become more popular and attracts many tourists. Aside from beautiful sceneries, rice field tourism also offers a unique way of enjoying nature. 
One of the most stunning rice fields in Indonesia is the spiderweb rice field. Spiderweb rice fields can be found at the Chanchar village in the sub-district of Ruteng, Manggarai. To get a view of the rice field, I have to climb up to the Chanchar hill. Don't be discouraged though, it's not that high, but do be careful when you take the route. Stay on clear pathway because the ground can be slippery. I have to carry on, you know. After 10 minutes of trekking, a gusty wind grits me. In the 70s, Agriculture became an important economic activity for people in Mangarai, in the mountainous area of Mangarai, like this Chanchar village. As you can see behind me, this wide rice field shaped like a spider web. That's why some people said that the name is like spider web rice field, but locally it's actually called Lingkolodok. What is Lingkolodok? I don't know. I want to know too. Luckily, a fixer happened to be from Ruteng district as well. Bentuknya seperti sarang laba-laba itu karena mereka awalnya datang dari salah satu rumah adatnya. Setelah itu, mereka memulai pembagiannya dari salah satu orang yang dipilih oleh kepala suku dari tengah ke keluar gitu kan. Mereka mengelilingi kepala suku itu. Setelah itu orang berikutnya dan terus dan seterusnya sampai semuanya dapat. Jadi, bentuknya seperti sarang laba-laba. The more resources a family had, the larger the slice of the pie. Later on, the patties were further split by the descendants of the original owners, through a series of ritual, of course. The harvest season usually starts in May. That's why the land is not entirely covered in green now. Some are brown and patchy since the harvest season has passed. I arrived at the cafe in the middle of a rice field called Chenggo Cafe. It's not far from Chanchar Hill and can be reached in around 20 minutes by car. When it comes to cultural thing, you have to see it, you have to feel it, and then of course you have to taste it. I am at Pochorutang village and I'm going to um, taste the traditional Labuan Pojo dishes. Ooh, I cannot wait. The place is quite new. The owner, Nani Agustinus, used to be a guide for tourists. But the pandemic has affected him severely. He decided to not rely only on income from the tourism sector. So he opened this small cafe, offering vegetables and spices that he grew himself. Meanwhile, his lovely wife cooked the meals. He leans into that cultural experience by displaying all sorts of manual equipment used by farmers from a machete, coconut shell ladle, battle chewing post, and charcoal iron. What caught my eyes is the candle knot breaker, since I saw someone used it back in Melo village. The candle knot is slipped in between the dried pinang leaves, where it would then be smashed against the rock. Whoa! So that's how you get candle knot in an old way. Yeah, because candle knot has a very tough shell to break. Look at that. Konsep bangunan ini dari rumah gendang ya, oh. gendang yang juga bisa mengingatkan kita bahwa barang-barang yang sudah kita tinggalkan sudah lama, artinya itu bisa hidup kembali oh. supaya anak generasi juga bisa mengetahui, supaya bisa juga tamu-tamu yang datang ke sini mereka bisa mengenal lebih dekat. And it works. I mean, it caught my attention. Finally, he is serving me some traditional Mangarai dishes. And here we go. This is the full-on Mangarai traditional dish. So how to taste it? The owner said that you have to use your hands, so don't be afraid to get handsy. Don't forget to wash your hands. I did. The dishes are served on a winnowing basket layered with a banana leaf. The garnish are flowers from his garden. 
For the entree, there are boiled sweet potato, boiled cassava and a corn sauté with ginger. The main course, which I am ready to pounce on, is a rice mixed with corn. There's also a fried salted dried anchovy that was sautéed together with fried peanut, fried tofus and tempeh in traditional spices. It doesn't end there, as there is some kind of salad made from a blanched papaya's leaves and flowers with seasoned and spice grated coconut for dressing. Donated directly from the winnowing basket, of course. He also prepared a plate made of coconut shells layered with banana leaves to enhance the aroma. So, mm, nah, I'm gonna skip the entree and jump straight to the main course because I like to live dangerously. This is how you assemble a mangarai nasi champur. Most of this dish here really represent Indonesian traditional cuisine. Oh, okay. The taste, the texture, and then of course the mixed vegetables and everything. That's why we prefer to eat it with hands. Because you know you can feel the texture, because eating it's not just about how you taste it in your mouth, but then it's a full-on experience. The colours and then the texture in your hand. And then look why it's built like this. Whew, it's become a full package. you can have some jungle juice so what is jungle juice do yourself a favor come down here and ask the guy yourself I'll give you a hint strawberries cherries and an angels kiss in spring my summer wine is really made from all these things. The journey ends here. I am certain that what I found in Labuan Bajo is something that I will treasure forever. I feel so giddy. I can't stop smiling. It's like I'm falling in love again. I'm falling in love with the nature, I'm falling in love with the culture, I'm falling in love with the people. I don't know, I don't think you can come down here just once. I think you have to come back down here and feel the love all over again.